Hey guys, it's me, Kelly. I'm so excited to bring you Barry Littleton. You have been requesting. Oh, I just I just did what I hate my daughter doing. Like Samantha, I want to see both your eyes. So sorry about that. Uh, so you guys have been requesting him like a ton. Uh, and uh, Barry is one of the most uh, requested guests for coming back that I have had. This is really exciting having him back. And we're going to talk about some surprises and some, some really, really exciting things. And then take your questions. I can't wait uh, to get your questions. So without further ado, here's Barry. Hello, Kelly. How you doing? Uh, I'm very honored. I did not think I'd be here again. So that's a, it's a blessing, definitely. Thank well, you. of course you would be here again. And Barry and I are friends, but people say that all the time. You know, when you go look at celebrities doing interviews on TV and stuff, it's like, oh, my friend so-and-so. But uh, Barry and I are this kind of friend. If you got your phone number in my personal phone, <laughs> that's, you, that means you're a good friend. And Barry has got my personal number, and he's in my phone. I even put your name in there. <laughs> I'm, I, I like texting too. I, I text back pretty quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we text and and we talk. I'm I'm surprised at how much we've talked about. Barry will just kind of call me up randomly and hey, this happened. I'm like, oh, cool. Write it down. We'll talk about it <laughs> on the show. You no, know, I think I think it's worth mentioning something right off the bat, mm -hmm. which is the fact that I'm actually doing this from my phone right now, which is completely yeah. disabled how I would normally conduct one of these. But my computer started up, upgrading to Windows 10, upgrade on top of that for no reason at all, automatically. And everything tried to stop us from doing this interview. And this is the first time you and I have done this that this happened. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think that's interesting. And it comes back to these phones and things we've been talking about concerning implants. I think all that's probably going to come up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, we have so much to talk about today. Oh, my gosh. I, I, mean, I, I rarely say this, but I feel undoubtedly that there was an attempt to stop this from happening, like an attack of a time. Oh, I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't go any of the sketches or anything I had correctly now. It's very interesting, but spirit takes over and we'll go where we go. <laughs> De definitely. And I know I've gotten their attention, removing their implants from people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you follow that, Barry, uh, but I've been removing um, alien implants from people, and it's amazing the difference that you see in them. And they realize that that chatter in that head, uh, in their head, and that self-talk that's negative, and uh, a lot of things, uh, addictions, all these things were implants. And people, for the first few days after they get their implants removed, they're like, I don't even know who I am. I thought I knew who I was, and I realized that was all programs that that were running in me. So people are are getting free from those. Uh, what what is your experience or your knowledge on these these um, alien implants? Now we're not talking the what you call physical ones in the third dimension. Uh, the these are ones that you see in, in the different energy bodies and in the different dimensions. So what what is your experience with those? You know, I I can say in my experiences. As far as extraterrestrial goes, um, I've not been implanted. I even went to a long link to see about that. However, you know, there are other implants that come along, like you said, but um, the fact that some of these are dimensional and what Nikola Tesla called scalar technology, mm -hmm. they're, so they're dimensional. And, you know, they're tagging. We discussed this last time upon our incarnation here when we're inducted into that scalar frequency and we come through that thing that you and I called the net. Remember? Mm -hmm. the frequency? Mm -hmm soul memories clean to a certain degree that at that point then is when we start having these implants, we can get tagged. So that is actually, I mean, that's insidious, but it's, and I've heard Eric mention it and you as also as well, uh, how some of these up on incarnation, these implants will become more physically, more physical as time goes on. But you know, that's something I hadn't thought of as far as an insidious plot by dark forces against immortal souls, which is us. And that is tagging our own souls as we incarnate. And then we, it, it makes us more susceptible to these frequencies, to keeping our psychic abilities nullified. and just make us plain food, these little shadows we all see in our peripheral vision all the time, you know, that eat on our negative emotions. That's what's going on. And sometimes these classifications aren't as separate as we think they are. 
Um, lately, I've been looking into different types of implants, and you kind of spurred me into that. Um, one of them is one by, these, by certain types of rays that are giving, and they're calling it uh, a Medusa implant. Really? It rather, it's, it's on my Facebook page I posted. It looks rather um, like <laughs> Medusa, kind of from Clash of the Titans, or with uh, Harry Hamlet. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> It kind, of like, it kind of looks like that a cross between us a, a, almost octopus like to me actually but there's several different implants i've been hearing of that that are more on the dimensional level and i've heard eric mention a few one of them being a spear that kind of inhabits um where our silver cord is have you seen that no he talked about it like being a ball about where our silver silver uh cold cord is silver cord excuse me um, oh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, when, when I, I see them. Yeah, when I when I see these things, um, you know, he had talked about a ball, and I saw. I, I've never. I, I've only seen like one or two that look like a sphere, and everything else is flat or um, up like a, you know, a bowl that's upside down. So I don't know if it's just the people that I have been working with that have been really trying to reach source and have distorted and uh, have, have done things actually to the implant to uh, distort it. That's mainly what I see, but it is, it's, it's right about right here uh, is, is where you will see them. Very interesting. Very interesting. You know, I've been thinking about other things as well. Um, talking with other melanin dominant experiencers, all right, um, other black experiencers especially, we talk about some of the things I've heard people like Corey Good and Andrew Basago and other experiencers talk about this um, scan that they get for nanotechnology when they go on board craft. Uh -huh. and, you know, a lot of this right now, especially if you're someone that's been involved in what they're calling the super soldier program, you've been probably tagged with some of this scalar technology. And I mean, we're dealing with things like what they call the black goo. And we do not talked about that, didn't we? And the black goo is a fiction fluid, kind of like it's um, presented in the X-Files and other and TV all the time. You see this black goo, even Star Trek, like a thing called Armis when that. Tasha Yar died. He came up. He's, but anyway, always a black goo. Now, someone proposed this to me, and I got in a long discussion with this, and they said something about oil. They said, Barry, mm -hmm. I think that oil in its unrefined state is sentient. Okay. Yeah, I spoke with Eve Lorgan, uh, Evie Lorgan, uh, about that. And we talked a little bit about black goo, and she has a friend, Laura, who's going to be on the show in about a month or two. And we're going to talk a lot about that black goo. Uh, I've seen black goo in other dimensions, uh, not in this one, but, but when I do these implant removals and it hasn't been on that many people, but I have seen black goo. It tends to be kind of around the heart. I'm sorry. My heart's over here. <laughs> it tends to be around the, the heart area when I see it. Here. <laughs> sorry, just a joke. Um, you know, uh, we're dealing though with nanotechnology artificial intelligence and the way my understanding of it is that you know the the veins of the earth contains something similar to what's called angelic golden liquid energy it looks similar okay. to that a honey thick light and what's happening is this artificial intelligence has been injected into the veins of the earth but oh. the natural plasma type of of of, of, of a um substance which is oil that is natural here you know i just got through listening on coast to coast am about a week ago a gentleman that was going against what's called uh the peak oil theory which means that oil is basically like coal it's dead plants and it's going to run out one day and he's they're saying no it's part that's created in the shale of the uh the mantle of the earth now mm -hmm. here let's, let's let me throw this at you all right i've been dealing a whole lot with self activating machines which is a lot of the star language we're seeing crop circles i think you and i talked about that last <laughs> Uh, Barry, we're having a hard time with their, the audio for some reason. It all it sounds kind of like I can hear your voice, and um, then it kind of sounds like you're in a can. <laughs> uh, is that better? 
Yeah, that, that's good. I'm not sure why it's doing that. I'm so sorry, guys. It's just uh, we. It, it, it's trying to stop what we're talking about. That's exactly because I and I talked to Barry before we started, and he's like, you know, I'm so handicapped. I don't know if I even want to do this, and I'm like, that's all the more reason to do it is is because they're doing this. So I apologize for the quality, but it, I, there's something that's going to come out today that's that they don't want to come out. As you say that, my computer just came back up. Oh my goodness. There we go. Well, do you, do you want to make a, a switch? Because uh, all you have to do. I go through the warm up, so that can only be another hour. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah, before that, as far as um, the, the uh, oil, I believe, inside of the earth, but um, self activating software, all right? And we self activating machines. And last time we compared that to what's called the Chad drone and the California drones that were seen in 2007. And on the tail of them, they have those crop circle looking uh, patterns. That's self-activating software. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. You can you put it like out <laughs> about right there? Let me see if that'll work a little bit better. Is that better? There you go. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like that Barry's like, I'm so frustrated. I want to try to cancel out on you, but Spirit wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> anyway, okay, so self-activating software, all right? So that's crop circle patterns and things like that. So what I see on Earth here, you have a hardware and a software on most of our advanced computers, correct? Yes. Okay, so what we've got here, okay, is like, give me an example. Um, these machines, this technology won't work unless it's in a certain field of energy, all right? Like even the anti-gravity uh, engines, the symbols on them actually activate the, 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 the material, but it also has to be in a certain field, a magnetic field, and it, it operates automatically, all right? Now let's take that and transform that to something, because I personally believe that we're eyewitnessing terraforming here on this planet has been going on a long time. And that way, crop circles are maybe the software and things like Stonehenge that operates, it, 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 up, it resonates at a frequency of 10 megahertz, mm -hmm. which is the same as the alpha state of the brain. That can cause brain entrainment, which is certain sounds. People using binaural beats for that right now. And not everybody likes binaural beats. Some people can dig it. Others can't. You know what I'm saying? But that's the same I, type of I didn't like it all that much. It didn't do much for me. It didn't feel like. <laughs> I, uh, uh, to me, uh, it, it, it didn't work for me at all. It sounded more like somebody scratching on a, on a chalkboard. Yeah, Very... it, it was irritating. <laughs> but um, as far as oil, when I'm trying to make the, it's this point here. Um, when oil is in the earth, it seems to be inert to a certain degree. All right which means uh, neither negative or positive. But when it gets in the field of human consciousness, that field of energy, it activates. And as far as the forces that run this planet here, this prison planet, what is happening to oil? And as a melanin-dominant individual, a black individual, we're dealing with a creature, maybe it's collective consciously aware, but it would be the most melanin-dominant creature on Earth. And it's being enslaved. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! How only living? Okay, you What's froze wrong? a little. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you were you were talking about uh, it being enslaved. And if you think about it, what do they do? Pump it out of the ground. They stick it in cars. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Hey. Everywhere. You remember the BP oil spill? How odd that is—the explosion, or whatever, and how it looked like it was mm -hmm. punctured. And more than that. Yeah. When those bastards were clearing, trying to clean up the oil, my God, they were spreading it. And to uh -huh. me, an, orga an, an angry organism that was being released. It has a problem with the other part of our planet, which is water. Like one quart of oil, I think, contaminates 10,000 gallons of drinking water. Something around that level. You know, and my understanding with this, this nanotechnology, this black goo is it needs a host. So when it was actually injected into Earth, it found oil as its main host. Host, And that's what gives it most of its effect. And the other ways, to certainly the scientists and things that were trying to flush it or whatever, it started also finding sewage as host also. And if you look on the internet, you're seeing a lot of that right now, black goo, sewage, and 
ragu coming up in lakes and lagoons. I think especially around uh, in Florida, I think it is. But anyway, um, that's just something. That's just something to kind of think on. You know, is that is oil a self-activating organism? Especially when you start looking at where is most of the war over oil going on, right around the dimensional pro, uh, portal in the Middle East, right? And that's going to be a lot of human consciousness there activating it. But if that's a being being enslaved like that being used, being trapped, parts of it being taken away and used, uh, that's war. And I'm starting to wonder how much the horrible tectonic uh, plates and earthquakes we're feeling are actually connected to that as much as it is the fracking. Oh, didn't think about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying it's right, but all I can do is offer food for thought for anybody. You know what I mean? Oh, and, and that's what I'm all about. I've, I had some people saying, Kelly, I don't uh, agree with everything you say, but I listen to you because you make me think. You make me get outside the box. You make me question things. And uh, so I, I think it's really cool. Anytime that you can get people, even, even if it's not true, um, even if they don't believe it, but they thought about it before believing it. And that's the cool thing is to question everything because people, oh, they watch the news. They don't question anything. It's it's all like the Paris bombing. <laughs> Just you know, the, on that, I need to be really careful because I got my channel shut down for revealing the truth uh, before with the uh, MH17 airplane that supposedly was shot out of the sky at thirty thousand feet, and I proved that that was uh, wrong. That, that it was not, <laughs> and it was physically impossible with the debris field to have been shot down from 30,000 feet, and that's what got my channel shut down. <laughs> so I don't know if I should comment about uh, about that. I put it on my Facebook, made a lot of people mad, but the majority of people were excited. They're like, finally, someone who's telling the truth um, about all this. Uh, but I've seen too many things with it uh, that uh, look like something was staged and something went on, uh, like a, a false flag. Now, when I say false flag, it doesn't mean that nobody died uh, mm -hmm. because 9-11 was a false flag event where actual people died. So un unfortunately, some of these false flags are, but it just, it smells like one so bad when, when you start looking at the facts and they're getting all the facts wrong again. Um, you know, it, it just looks like a, another one. And I just, I saw immediately, I said, oh, watch for, watch for uh, terror threats in the United States real soon. And ISIS, ISIS uh, equals CIA. So the CIA is uh, putting out all these threats in the name of ISIS uh, that they created in the United States now. So my prediction was true <laughs> that they were going to start doing this in the United States. And Paris is the one that set the precedence. Uh, and, and in Paris, they were going door to door also. Uh, they declared martial law and they were entering people's homes without permission. So that's, you know, there's more, there's more, but that's probably all I need to say. <laughs> you know, I, I think um, also there's something that's called, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh-huh. Sorry, I'm paranoid now. <laughs> um, there's um, something that was termed by Rupert Sheldrake. He calls it the morphogenic field. And basically what that is, is the intent of a person, how that kind of gets into your aura and your intent to will goes outwards. Um, I kind of think of how uh, Yoda described the force in Empire Strikes Back, he described the force as something generated by all living organisms and contained as, as such. That's kind of the morphogenic field. And when you start looking at that as a collective consciousness level, okay, the morphogenic field created by humanity up on planet Earth, man, it's negative. Let's face it. I mean, I try not to be negative, but out of, out of, out of 100 people on this planet, excuse my language, I don't want to cuss, but... 75 of them are fucked up, man. And they'll murder you. They'll kill you. They'll cheat you any way, anyhow they can. Strictly for material benefits. They will kill you over a God that they have not seen and that they're claiming is different from yours. Right? That they can remember seeing anyway. So that that, that is the issue. So when you deal with the morphogenic field of humanity on planet Earth, it's one of hatred Murder, mine, 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 selfish. 
Okay, and in, in turn, we're also destroying our sphere. So what happened? Our planet started, this kind of goes back to the Mother Gaia concept. Our planet started calling out to us first. And what happened? It just, it, it got more torture. There's not enough green peace people out to stop the torture that's going on as far as um, industrial, industrial is doing. It's really like oil and all that. You know what I mean? It's not been enough to stop that. So when the planet reached out, cried out to us, it got more destruction. So what's the next thing it did? It started crying out to its parent star. And our parent star, our sun, has been acting very erratic for some time now. And I think it's very close to eradicating the skin cancer on its daughter, which would be humanity. And these solar flares, these solar promises, these things that come in, they're very serious. If one of them is Earth-directed and it doesn't get deflected by some of these, some of these, these ships, you can see these mother ships, you can see deflecting them. So what are you doing? Oh, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, you can see on the Soho website that NASA runs, the satellite that observes the moon, it takes continuous footage that is all archived. You can look at some of this footage seconds and you'll see some of these ships around the sun. And some of them being solar flares that were Earth directed. They're breaking that off. And how long can we expect that to keep happening? Just throwing that out there. You know, I, I try not to be negative, but there's certain timelines we're dealing with here. And that's one of them. I think a lot of the remote viewers, like Ed Dames and them, have seen that. He gives a, a, a video at, at his website, Ed Dames does, called The Kill Shot. It's free. You pay the $3 for handling, shipping and handling. I advise everybody to look at it. It's free. And it's one possible timeline that a lot of the remote viewers saw. I try not to stay on the negative stuff so much. I'm hoping for a positive deal. But we have to be aware that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so someone wrote, Barry says it like it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's, That's cool because you know, the thing about us talking, I can't prove anything. One is I didn't have anything. I don't have anything to sell. I was not known for being somebody in UFO circles. That's for sure. You know what I mean? And name, name, name two, I could also be chemical imbalances or I could just be a liar and a great storyteller. So the fact that anybody resonates with anything I'm saying says a lot more about them and the reality of them, you know, which is pretty cool. Oh, exactly. It's yeah. It's interesting that you were talking about the force because yesterday I uh, was trying to, my, my husband said, Oh, let's watch star Wars, you know, as a family. And I found out it was on DVD on, on Netflix. So I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't get it. Uh, but it just kind of, I thought, wait, the force, what is that? Is that like chi? You know, I was trying to, to figure out what it related to, and I couldn't quite match it with, with something. But your description of it, because um, when I, was, I remember watching uh, um, Star Wars when I was younger, and mm -hmm. it's like, what is the force? I couldn't grasp the concept of what the force was. Well, you know, I, I think from a galactic standpoint, Star Wars is probably quite correct. You know what I mean? In certain ways. Because what you have there is you have the Force, but you have the Jedis who, for people like me and this the public enemy, kind of represents what's called S1W, the security of the first world. That's what the Jedi are. And the Jedi were basically uh, very God-faring, love-faring on that frequency, all right? And they were also in control of keeping things order. And when they got overthrown by the Empire, who were evil cats... All right, basically, and they call it, I think uh, they call it the Sith, which are basically demonic forces. All right, I know the very end one when they when Darth Vader got his name, the dude was reaching into hell to try to get his, his name. You know, it's, it's that, that kind of concept, though. And we look at that from a galactic standpoint, our galactic standpoint, we have uh, an empire that took over a galactic center, center. All right, and you have a place where you had to send. Souls that were not just criminogenic, your rapers, your, I mean, on the soul level, I'm talking, your extreme criminals, they were wiped clean and sent to a prison planet. But then by the same token, you've got these geniuses walking around, these creative geniuses that aren't conforming to the empire deal, and they have to be two things eradicated. So they're what? Since they're immortal soul beings, they're wiped clean, given an electrical shock, 
because we know right now through science and Orgon, or Wilhelm Reich that orgone energy, and we could call it prana or chi, has a conflicting association with electricity. It's uh, it, 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 they, they don't go good together. So when they shock our soul with electricity to a certain degree, then give us what we're so familiar with now, which is hypnotic suggestion. Okay, wiped clean. You know, and I'm going to throw another deal in that. So that's one force against us, but we have another problem too. And I, people keep asking me about this. And, you know, I'm so busy. I was so busy when my guides and my angels threw these immortal soul trips, soul traps at me. I wasn't in them, but they're like, you got to be aware of this and you have to talk about it too. So that was rather disturbing. <laughs> but as far as us being immortal soul beings, Kelly, what does that really mean to you? Well, I don't know. You know, I am not the vocabulary queen. <laughs> but, but, I'm sorry. Oh, just and now immortal spirit or immortal soul? Um, Both. But I mean, I kind of, I kind of don't make the. Okay. Well, well, to to me, kind of, kind of the way I see it is, uh, the spirit is eternal and you know lives forever. And in order to have this experience on this planet, uh, the spirit comes down and puts on a suit. Uh, which is the soul in order to have this, these experiences and the soul is kind of like a program that's, that's encoded with personality and emotions and, and things like that in order to have the experience uh, on the planet. And then over that goes basically the meat suit. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think about, you know, when, when they say, you know, Oh, you know, your, your soul, you sell your soul. Who gives a crap? You know, my spirit lives on forever. The soul is just a suit I wear. So I just, it doesn't worry me uh, for people talking about, Oh, we're just going to steal your soul. But yeah, spirit, that, that's, that's eternal. I don't, I don't see how the soul is eternal though. I'm not sure. It seems like something that can be easily manipulated in, in this matrix, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like a program. Well, you know, when you start dealing with things like that, because you start dealing for me, the realm of consciousness, which is um, you have the consciousness. Now the waking state, you know, like the band of man, the right hand side of awareness, and you've got the left hand side of awareness, which is where death lies, the subconscious, the super consciousness, the sleep state, all these things lay on the left side of awareness. And the problem with us as immortal soul beings, okay? Um, okay, uh, let's just start from the beginning. Here's the problem, okay? If we're immortal souls and beings, I think that when, especially, it might be the Christian Bible that says we're made in God's image, it's certainly not for some Caucasian dude that's on a chair, okay? That's not what's going on. I think it's the aspect of us being creators on the soul level. And it's so easy for us to think, oh, there's another God that created this universe and this and that, and not to think that bubble theory is real. And each one of us is an immortal soul that is capable of creating our own universe. You know, one of my regressions, I've seen that. I've seen the first soul, the first wave that came out of the creator. We're creators. That's how he created everything. It created everything. All right. Now, there's one problem, though. All right. Oh my gosh, there's a helicopter flying over my house right now. Down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, check this out. As immortal Can you soul. Hear it? Can you hear that? No, no, I, I can't. I, I, this, this phone sucks. The fact this has gone this good is a miracle, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I haven't heard a helicopter in a long time, and it's right over my house. Oh my gosh. Probably a black one, no doubt. Um, it's, yeah, I can't see outside, but I can, I, here it is right up there. <laughs> you know, here's the deal. As immortal soul beings, all right, I think there's two things that we have forgotten. One would be that we are beings that are able of create things by using energy and matter to create space. Okay? The next problem is, as immortal soul beings, what real obstacles do we do we face uh -huh. one stagnation uh -huh. and number two boredom boredom if you are an immortal soul you are the alpha and the omega you've always existed you know the end of everything you know the outcome of everything you have been everything there's not much left except for to do what 
trick yourself into forgetting everything and then going back and remembering who you are, discovering things again. That's the only way to do it. And, you know, and I, I say that. Hmm. Ah. Do, do you want me to, while you're, while you're thinking, do you want me to run outside real quick and, and videotape it? Yeah, go for okay. it. Yeah, you keep talking. Keep talking. I'll be right back. Okay, they'll give me a chance to try to get online too. Shit. All right. Uh, anyway, I guess that. Oh boy, that really threw me off. I apologize, to people. Um, pretty much as immortal souls. All right, we're facing boredom and facing stagnation, and I can kind of take that and corroborate that to the the Tibetan Book of the Dead which describes the first seven days after death initially and the first three days you experience all the positive things or the negative things that you put out uh, onto others during your lifetime in this body, which can actually come back as karma so strong that it scares you back into a reincarnation into a body or even a lower level of existence than this. All right. And then you've got the second part, which is all the love and positive things you put out in this body comes back a million fold. And when that comes back, it can kind of bliss us out. And they kind of described it as being like uh, these gods on this beach where everything you could possibly want is already brought to you. So what do you have? What volition do you have to go any further? You don't really have any. You kind of stay there. So at that rate, you're not reaching for more creator source achievement, complete uh, merging with him. You kind of stop there. And for me, being a Star Trek geek, I've been criticized for that, but who cares? Being a Star Trek geek, I kind of take that and think about Q, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Q was uh, omnipotent and omniscient, but he kept coming back to the Enterprise. And when they finally asked why, he said, well, there's something about humanity. You have this volition to keep going forward, and you never sta you don't get stagnation. There's no stagnation. And he, he started looking. He goes, in 10,000 years... And uh, Riker and Picard looked at him and said, uh, in 10,000 years, do you know how advanced we'll be? And he said, yes, as advanced as us or beyond us. And we have to know why. Just food for thought. You know, how many things are masked, I think, in science fiction is, uh, is necessary. But anyway, um, immortal soul beings, beings that live in false illusion and false guises, because we can create in that way through energy and matter to create space. I think I got it right. You threw me off when you jumped up and took off like that. But uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've got video. I just posted it on Facebook. I'm not joking. It is right over my house. Okay, let me <laughs> let me let me see if I can uh, get this. I mean, you guys are like, oh my gosh, you know, never never dull moment at the Kelly house. And now, why is my computer not working? Ah, uh, see. <laughs> Look at those like, helicopters. We should be here talking to me, bringing in that, that dark energy. That's what it is. It's interfering with your technology. This is crazy. Well, since oh, you don't okay. have plants anymore and they can't get to you, they can get to your technology, correct? Oh, exactly. Yeah, yes, they can. And I posted two videos. Let me see uh, if it posted both of them. Oh, no, it just posted one. What's going on? It just posted one of the videos. Interesting. Interesting, Barry. But yeah, uh, let me see if I can. This is this is the second one. It didn't post the first one. <gasps> Why wouldn't it do that? That is so weird. Okay, let me get this in the middle. And <laughs> let me do I guess <laughs> Barry, like this is very interesting. Let me see if I can do screen share. There we go. Screen share. Uh, okay, we'll do the entire screen. Share, ta-da. Here it is, <laughs> right above my house. It's not black, is it? It's not black. Now, does this look like, I don't know if you can see my cursor, does that look like a camera? That almost looks like a camera. Oh yeah. Gosh. Or some type of a, tech. you know, some of those drones have those boxes on them, too. It's a black box, isn't it? It's oh well yeah I, I couldn't see it too closely uh, I I guess I can get this and make it bigger. Let's see. It's kind of blurry when I zoom in. Does that look round or does it look like a box? 
And it, it's still up there. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's still above my house. Oh, and I can't really tell. Mm, yeah, it's hard to tell whether it's uh, it's a circle or a dome or something square. It's really hard to tell. It's just right there above my house, Barry. This is like crazy. You're like over it, actually, or? This is crazy. Okay. Yeah. There. Okay, we're back. Oh, so what do you think about that? I think that you're attracting a lot of attention. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> oh my gosh. This has just been crazy. I wonder how long it's gonna stay there. Probably for a while. So I'm with you absolutely. I'm just trying to get my computer up and going, so I'm Oh my gosh. So, um, hello, Kelly and Barry. Love you, Kelly. Aw. What? You don't love Barry? What do you guys? What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> they are watching and listening to you, Kelly. <laughs> okay, then put the laugh part in there. It just sounded better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Flash Gordon, right? Yeah, that's always the way I look at that one. You know, <laughs> Ming the Merciless. I think we're not too far from that, to be honest with you. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think I went over most of that, uh, the stuff about the. Um, immortal soul traps but it's just more you know so often i think you've been told i've been told most everybody that's had experiences whether they be with angelics or extraterrestrials they're told you don't remember what you are and i think that's got a lot to do with it that we are creators in that way and that there's that much responsibility spiritual responsibility with us you know and it scares me because right now i walk around this planet and i told you before i see these these beings that are coming from what I call the the shamans called the levels of fluidity, mm -hmm. which are kind of below us there and more of a matter, dense matter. I think there's a lot of souls coming from that, and they're incarnating here just like you and I. And once they get here, our systems are so screwed up that they can start doing mass murder. They can do serial killing. You know, I talk about Jeffrey Dahmer a lot. That interview I had done for my my thesis, which was over serial serial killers. And she, he did one with Diane Sawyer. Really? Yeah, and he, you know, he was in prison already. Not long before he was murdered in there. But he had, you know, very meek during his interviews. He kind of looked down a lot. And at one point towards the end, he looked up. He said, a lot of people have asked if I'm schizophrenic and why did I do this? He said, I'm not schizophrenic. I did it because it felt good. And if you let me go, I will do it again and again. And then she added, she, and she was kind of stunned. I had to pause it and go outside for a minute and, you know, chill out. Um, he also carried several souls to his job with him, maybe just one, and hung it in his locker. And when she asked him why, he said, you don't understand. It's like when I was consuming them, it gave me power over their soul, over their spirit. See, that's cannibalism, and that's the worst deal, you know? I remember my mother saying at the time, Lord, not just do they hate us, black people. Now they eating us. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of levity for you, but um, on the serious note, it's—I mean, I, I don't know—but that, that that worries me. And when we look at this this morphogenic field being created down here, and things like the Paris attack, I mean, that is oh. nothing but, but but generating more of that negative field that keeps these beings being able to feed on that energy. Mm -hmm. Cycling here, not knowing who the hell we are, what the hell we are, partially because we got to trick ourselves, partially because we've got forces against us, negative forces trying to wipe us clean. So I just thought I'd throw that in there, but hey, don't get me wrong, I'm Mr. Sunshine. It's <laughs> 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 like they don't want him on this show. And there's a helicopter right above my house, it's still there. It's still there. Wow, oh I'm trying to I can't believe you can't hear that. Uh, yeah, people were commenting about the the helicopter, and they said both of the videos. Uh, oh, someone said, "What's your Facebook, Kelly? Kelly Coffee on Facebook? That's what it is." Let's see. Someone said, "When they built Stonehenge, they've got pictures of it, and I think the pictures are fake." So <laughs> probably. <laughs> I mean, how do we know when they built, built it? Who's going to take a picture of that? I'm going to tell you, if it's that easy, there's a certain gentleman, I won't mention his name, all right, but he's always talking about the bread that he's getting from all these different extraterrestrials. It's the biggest load of crap I've ever heard, all right? And the extraterrestrials sound like a coffee percolator, but we won't go into that. But I'm telling you right now, I asked my guides, I said, hey, can I get a couple of selfies? 
I'll be, I, I could make some money if I get a couple selfies. I didn't get nothing back. They stopped responding. The whole channel shut down. Really? That was a joke. Oh. That was a joke. <laughs> kind of a joke. You didn't get it? Everyone says I don't have a sense of humor. You see, it comes out. You see, <laughs> what I'm saying is, I have I have extraterrestrial contact, but can I get them to give me a couple selfies like everybody else? I see people taking selfies just trying to walk down the street. If I could, just, if they could just send me a couple selfies, I could post those. I could make a fortune. <laughs> yeah. Or everybody would say they were faked. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know, I, I occasionally see pictures of something that appears to be real, especially somewhere along the Bigfoot lines. Mm -hmm. And it's the automatic, the thing to discredit things right now in 2015 is CGI. It's CGI. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything is CGI, therefore it cannot be real. You know, and that discredits some of the real things coming out. Oh, absolutely. Ab absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Um, these uh, implants that I've been, um, been removing, uh, on those, they they tend to be kind of the same as far as the uh, what I see is like a big agenda. They block you from source. Mm -hmm. They put a chatter in in your head, and they just pummel your pineal gland. Uh, I see a lot of, a lot of heart issues. They put uh, creatures in there to make your emotions go uh, all over the place, and then it uh, keeps you from connecting to the planet. <laughs> so. So I, I see these common ones over and over and over. Is is that something like an agenda that you're aware of that you have seen? Well, I know that a lot of the, the beings along with these implants, they start as um, negative thought forms, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's how they kind of gain access into our pineal gland and use that as a wormhole to start projecting himself and manifesting in the third dimension. So I would say yes in that way. And I think a lot of the implants you're removing – whether they be physical or uh, dimensional, astral, I think you're doing the same thing. You know, and let, let me throw this in, too. And I'm not saying it's correct, uh -huh. but for those people that have been abducted, as I've not been abducted, didn't have that type of implant put in me, I think what that does is allows the experiencer to be more, more susceptible to virtual reality scenario technology. VRST, holographic technology. It's not just they're tracking you like a cattle, like a cattle on a ranch, which is disconcerting also. But they're also, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a reason that, 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 what Dr. Dr. Lear said about them. Certain magnetic costs they uh, oscillate at. Certain things about the physical implants he removed. To me, that sounds like it could possibly be holographic technology to, to mm -hmm. make us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, definitely. People laugh at me. They always say, use a reference. A reference I can use is a movie when I was, I was a kid, like 1980. It was called Looker. And it was a guy that was a football player that looked like Tom Selleck. And uh, what he was doing is he had a gun. And he had this gun was called a Looker gun. As in mm -hmm. like ocular oriented kinetic emotive responses that's heavy all right and what it does when they flash it the the, the pulse would actually make you lose time huh. you a lot of experiences are getting that at the same time they were programming into commercials these lap light pulses also to make people more susceptible to products not so far out at all <laughs> you feel me interesting so, for thought you know uh, all right. Interesting. Yeah. Do you um? Is that a laptop computer or like a desktop computer? Can you hear me? Yeah. They said invite them in for a cup of tea. They're so funny. They're yes. so funny. Invite them in for a cup of tea. They're still up there. They're still up there flying around. Oh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're switching computers. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, is it clear? Uh, no. It's 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 really bad. Sorry. Yeah, shut the other one down. Yeah, just go ahead and turn the other one off, and, and you'll be good. And see if you can put the ear... Um, I don't know. Does it work without the, the headphones? Yeah. There. 
Sure. Looks good. I'm so sorry, guys. They're like, this is this is like the most disorganized show Kelly's ever done. <laughs> Let's see. Do aliens choose who they want to be seen by? I would say absolutely yes. Um, part of the thing about first contact and what it and Barry froze. <laughs> Are you there, Barry? Oh my gosh, this is this has been so riddled <laughs> with with problems. I am so sorry, guys. This is the hell. He's probably doing something there. I know, right? This is crazy. Are you there? Just, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. And you're kind of. You're, there you go. You're back. Oh man. You know this is crazy. We were. They, they. This has been multiple attempts to stop this. And I'm not a real conspiracy guy, but this is real. I mean, this is this is crazy. There's no reason for any of this, except for us not to do it because there's people listening that shouldn't hear this, for whatever reason. I mean, enough to where it's taken us off topic a few times and everything else. An answer to the question, um, as far as do, who do extraterrestrials choose to contact? Be aware some of them are interdimensional, and I think also there's an amount of consciousness we're dealing with here. And you don't think, like, you have a crowd of ten people, two people might see a ship, and the other people are saying, I can't see it, I can't see it. 